Hey guys, EBV Man here, and if you're lucky enough to have an iPhone 10 in your hand, or you're expecting it today, or in the next few days, you're going to want to watch this video. This is a video full of tips and tricks, and everything you should know on how to navigate the new iPhone 10, especially since it doesn't have a home button. All right, so the first thing you may want to know is how do you get home if there's no home button? So what we're going to do is we're going to go into an app. So I'm here in Photos, and I want to go home, right? You would normally press the home button. So all you do is you swipe up. It's that simple. Now, the next thing you may be asking yourself is like, how do you now get to the previous app? Remember, you used to press that double tap to bring up the app. Watch this. All you do is you bring your finger up and you pause, and now you could go back to that app. Actually, you can go back to any of the apps by just bringing it up and pausing and you can go to any of the apps that you had previously open. Now the next thing you may be asking yourself, well um, that's great, so now we have the multitasking, you can switch over and you can also go home, but what if you want to close an app? So if you do this again, right, and you hold, you're going to see that you have your apps here. Well, you just can't swipe them away, because if you swipe them away, all you're doing is going home. So how do you close apps? All you do is you do the same feature, press and hold and then what you're going to do is press and hold on one of the apps and you notice how you have that minus sign well as soon as you tap that minus sign that will close the app that's how you do it so notice how I have um, some more apps right here I can just do that and then just close it out um, and then go to the one that I want to get in or once again go home now accessing Siri has also changed uh, what you're going to do is if you want to access it you'll press the side here the power button press and hold hey Siri what's the weather like All right. And then we'll just swipe away. Now, the other way, obviously, is just to use the hey, um, you know, or the, the S command, which will bring her up as well. So, again, all you do is press and hold, or you just invoke her using that invocation command. Now, occasionally, uh, you find that your iPhone starts misbehaving and you want to reboot it or power it down. Uh, now that you don't have, remember, if you press and hold this, Siri is going to be activated. So, what do you do to bring that? Uh, power button, the slide that comes up on top. Because a lot of people just thought that if you press the power button and it turned it off, that that was actually shutting down the phone. Um, it actually isn't. So to get the slide where you can power it down completely, what you do is you press the Siri button and you press the volume button at the same time. Watch. So I'm going to press them both. And then now you have that slider. So that's how you shut down the phone. And it's actually something that I recommend, you know, even as an iPhone user, I once a week do this to make sure that my iPhone is nice and snappy. I wish they had an auto reboot feature, uh, but that's not something they have yet. So now the next question you may be asking yourself, how do I take a screenshot? Well, this is what you do. You see how you have your up volume button and the power? All you do is you tap it both at the same time and you'll do a screenshot. Watch. Now you have your screenshot and it's there and available for editing or for anything you'd like to do. Uh, what you can also do is delete it if you'd like or save it in photos. Now Apple uh, has also done something pretty neat. Um, I'd say that they copied from LG. LG had this knock feature that you could knock to wake up your phone. So if you tap your phone twice, you're going to wake it up. And you have some functionality, like if you swipe to the uh, if you're going from, again, from right to left, you can bring up your camera. If you swipe this way, you have your to-do and everything that's going on in recent apps. Uh, you could also then swipe down, and you're going to get access to all of your toggles and controls that you see here. Um, or what you could do is you can press and hold uh, to enable your flashlight. And when your flashlight turns white like this, um, you know that it's on. You'll get feedback also. You'll feel it. So again, a lot of features. You can either swipe for your camera, you can press and hold for your camera, you could go to your toggles to adjust the brightness because if you're in a meeting or whatever and you don't want to wake everyone up every single time you check and see if something's going on on your phone, um, especially if you do this. So uh, a lot of options that you can take place right here from the lock screen. Now the last thing I want to show you from your lock screen um, is that you could also get access to your notification. So you notice how I'm pushing upwards and it says no notifications, no older notifications. If I had a notification just by going like this, I'd be able to see it without having to unlock my phone, just by doing like that. Now the next option, and we're going to go ahead and knock, is let's say you want to discreetly unlock your phone without anyone really noticing and you don't want to use that Face ID feature, right? So what you do is you swipe up and notice how the number pad comes up. So that's all you have to do to get that. Again, all you do is you 
swipe up and now you have it in your number pad and you can key it in without anyone noticing that you're unlocking your phone. I know it's a little sneaky but hey you, you don't want to lift up your phone and look at it to unlock it. Now the other thing that you may be um, looking for is to be able to you know turn on your Wi-Fi, turn off your Wi-Fi, all the things that you'd have in your control panel which you used to be able to get from swiping down. Remember I showed you this a couple seconds ago. You can get your control panel from swiping from this corner. Now each one of these functions has a deeper function. So for example if I press and hold on the camera function notice how I have the ability to take a selfie, record, or recorder in slow-mo and it's going to take me to the camera setting and it's going to invoke that specific feature. Uh, so again just something to be aware of. You know a lot of these if you press and hold they'll do something uh, special or have an additional function like here now you can turn on or off a true tone um, or turn on the night shift right so once again experiment and see what you can do because all of these controls have multiple functions this is something that Android has been doing for a very long time and it's great to see this now in the iPhone now another tip that I typically give folks is how to see the battery percentage on the top and typically that's a setting that you go into for whatever crazy reason Apple uh, did away with that so if you want to see what your battery percentage is you have to swipe down notice how you can see it there now so before uh, you would be able to see it here and you can turn that on or off in a lot of phones. You could do that definitely in Android. But no battery percent. If you want to see your battery percent, you have to do this. Why? I don't know, but that's how it works. So now, um, as you know, there's a lot of configurations that you can uh, work with. And one of the things I wanted to show you is the fact that, you know, this control panel here, um, if you are an Apple TV user, which a lot of folks who have an iPhone also are, you can have a built-in remote that you can use on your phone to control your Apple TV. So to get that uh, remote control and also to do some customization is you can go into the control center which is in the send settings and then what you could do is by tapping on customizing control center you can find a whole bunch of things that are here. So for your Apple TV you just hit the plus sign and there's a lot of other things that you can play with like I use a magnifier a lot um, you know, to be able to look at uh, small print. So now that I've done that um, I will basically go back and then just swipe up and now when I swipe down uh, you'll notice that I have my Apple TV and then I also have my magnifying glass that I can use instead of just starting up my camera. So now some of you are picking up your phone at the store or you know getting it into the office and you may not be in the best lighting conditions and you have to uh, re scan your face you could go into settings go into face ID and pass codes enter your password and then in this area you're going to be able to see where you can reset the face ID so it's just going to rescan the face especially if you're having some difficulty but it's also going to give you a sense of what the face ID is for what it can use for and pretty much this replaces uh, touch ID so anything that you could use your finger for you can now use uh, touch ID or face ID now there's a couple of cool features here that I just wanted to talk about a little bit and this is around Face ID which has some people concerned. You know if you're asleep is the phone going to, and can someone hold up the phone to your face and just unlock it? Uh, that kind of stuff. So if you notice here where it says require att uh, attention for Face ID, well this re these two features here you want to have them both on because what this does is if your eyes are closed the phone won't open uh, because it's going to require you to be looking at your phone with your eyes open. Uh, so very cool feature but make sure you have these two on and it's on by default uh, but just in case you turn them off by mistake or whatever you want to make sure that it's on because this is going to give you that extra sense of security so that not just anyone can just point the phone at you and then all of a sudden it gets unlocked. Now under this area there is another important feature and I'm going to bring this up right here and this this area here. Um, this to me is an area of concern uh, because of the fact that with your phone being locked you can still see your notifications, you can still go into control center, you can still access Siri, you can reply to messages, there's all these things that you have access to. So if you're very security conscious and you don't want to be able to get into these things, and you saw me do these a little bit earlier, all you have to do is turn these things off. So if you don't want someone to be able to see what your calendar looks like, you, you don't want them to access the control center because they can turn off Wi-Fi and do all this other stuff, you can just go ahead and continue to disable these things so that you know it's not available so you know I can turn off Siri so if my phone is locked Siri's not gonna work so these are all the things that I would recommend that you take a look at and then change it based on what you're comfortable with for me personally I disable as many things as I can and leave only those things that are crucial and important to how I use my phone
Now the iPhone uh, 10 also has a fantastic uh, 4K camera and uh, you may want to be able to take advantage of that especially if you went with the larger capacity uh, iPhone. So let's go into camera settings so this is the only place where you're going to be able to look at it. Uh, and you have the choice here notice where it says to record video and record slow-mo. So this is where you're going to be able to one of the things I like doing for my camera settings is I like uh, turning on the grid because uh, it gives me a different perspective. But then what I also like doing is if I'm going to record some video, here you have the choice to go up to 4K at 60 frames per second. That's ultra smooth, high definition. Now, as you make these choices, you have to really think about how much space you have. So 4K at 60 frames per second is going to use up a lot of space, right? So just make sure that you have enough space to to actually take advantage of it. Now one thing I highly recommend, and this is a, a software tip, is that anytime you're, you have an iPhone or any kind of device, download Google Photos because Google Photos gives you free and limited storage. I know, I know, I know you guys are like into the iCloud, but the iCloud only gives you limited space and you have to pay for it. Google Photos can run on your phone and it could be, and it can store unlimited pictures, unlimited video, and it's all free. So it's okay if you cross the line and you go to the dark side with Google when it comes to photos. Now this next feature I, sh I show my friends because I've had a couple of them call me where um, you know most parents will give their phone to their child when they're in the shopping cart or uh, you know just to, to keep them entertained if they're in the doctor's office and their child and I'm telling you these kids no matter how small they are they get really smart with iPhones and with any um, you know smart device or smartphone including Android and they start charging things, buying things, and parents don't know any better until they see the bill. So um, if you click on the search on the top of the settings area, we're going to go into restrictions. And the neat thing about restrictions is that you could set up a passcode. And this is also for teenagers uh, because most parents, their, their kids know the passwords to their phone. And you know, this has Face ID, but you saw that you can swipe up and you can actually get into... I'll put in a passcode. So everybody knows my passcode at home. But what you could do is you can enable restrictions. And these restrictions, when you enable them, are going to be for, and let me cancel that out, for any of these things here. So if you want to control music purchases, if you want to control, you know, installing applications, you can actually put in uh, those restrictions in there and then uh, have a separate passcode that is not the one you use to unlock your phone. It's not the one that you use to... To, um, to access anything else, like even your passcode uh, for iTunes. It's unique to this restriction area. And there's a lot of neat things that you can do here. You know, you can restrict content, you can restrict ratings, you can re restrict even location services. There's all this different stuff that you can uh, restrict so that it cannot be modified. So it's a great, great tool to really keep um, cost under control, especially in the Apple ecosystem, or just to control some of the settings you don't want anyone messing with. Uh, so that concludes my tips and tricks for the iPhone 10 um, and a lot of hidden features that you may have not uh, thought of or known about. So if you have any comments or questions or you have some tips yourself, leave them in the comment area below. I'd love to hear from you. And as always, don't forget to share and subscribe. Thanks for watching and give it a thumbs up.